Hello, everyone. Uh, again, Brian O'Leary, uh, Executive Director with the Book Industry Study Group, and I'd like to welcome to you to today's presentation on the BISAC Subject Codes 2022 edition, uh, led by Carney Harvison, who's chair of our Subject Codes Committee. As you probably know, uh, the Subject Codes Committee is one of five committees that BISG um, uh, maintains. It's our longest standing, dating back to the mid-1990s. Um, Connie's uh, led it for the uh, for the past roughly 17 or 18 years, I think. And uh, this is uh, an annual um, commitment that the committee's made to both update and release a new set of subject codes uh, each fall. Uh, we're happy to hear from Connie, who's going to give us an overview of what's different in this edition and some of the thinking that went into it. And uh, we really appreciate her making the time today to share that with us. Uh, Connie, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, before we get started, does anyone know um, the cover images that I have? Does anyone know what all these people have in common? Anyone? Let's see if anyone put the chat. Oh, they all share a birthday today. That I would not have guessed. <laughs> um, so today we're gonna to talk a little um, about the BISEC subject committee, um, who we are and what we do. Um, some, some of you who have attended uh, webinars that I've given before have, uh, this is, that will probably be familiar to you. And um, we'll talk about the new additions, um, what's included in them and the timing of them. And then what everyone wants to hear, uh, the 2022 edition highlights. Uh, we'll talk about some hints for assigning headings and what to do if you want to request a new heading. So who we are. The BISEC subject committee is um, comprised of volunteers and we represent all different segments of the book industry, uh, publishers, wholesalers, retailers, data providers, um, and we're from all different positions within the company. Um, you know, people from very high positions, people from uh, not so high positions. And um, we all have different interests, uh, different areas of expertise, perhaps. Um, some of us have no expertise in some of the uh, BISAC heading uh, top level subjects. Um, but the one thing that we all have in common is that uh, pretty much everyone on the committee is very passionate about uh, metadata and about subjects. Our, uh, goal, our mission is to maintain the BISEC subject headings, the merchandising themes and the regional themes as well as providing guidance on the implementation and use of the standards. Anyone can join the committee if you're employed by a BISG member company. Uh, you know, you might wanna check with a, a supervisor or, uh, you know, maybe your company might already have someone represent, uh, representing them on the committee. But uh, if you're not a BISG member, and you're interested in being on the committee, uh, just contact Brian and he will give you all the information on joining uh, BISG. Some of the values of uh, membership on the committee is to drive the discussions on changes uh, that you think are of value in the industry, uh, to share and hear real use cases, uh, to help the committee make better informed decisions, and to bring your expertise on a subject matter in which your company may specialize or which you personally may specialize. The BISEC subjects have been around since um, the first edition was released to the public in 1994. And uh, so this is about the 28th edition, I believe. Uh, we usually, release in the fall. Um, we used to release earlier in the uh, spring or summer, uh, but for the past 15 years or so, we've been releasing in the fall. Just a 
I thought this was interesting to include um, just to show you about the growth of the list. Um, so in 1997, uh, there were about 2,300 headings. The new, um, the new list has about 5,200 headings. And one of the areas on the list that's always growing the most is fiction. And in 1997, it started with the, it had a mere 50 headings and now we're at 316 headings. So that list is growing every, every edition uh, for the past uh, 15 or so years, that list, the fiction heading list has been growing. Uh, in each new edition, we make minor revisions to each section, and that's um, an ongoing basis that's based on the need, um, new books that are coming out, or incoming requests um, that people submit to us. We also choose a section for, or a section or, or multiple sections for major revisions. And that's kind of on a cyclical basis. Some need to be looked at a little more than others. Uh, computers is one that needs to be looked at every few years, um, while the one that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, antiques and collectibles, uh, not, not as often. And new versions of the list are released on an annual basis in the fall. So the timeline of the edition is um, October to August, we meet to discuss additions and changes uh, for that edition. Uh, that's what we're doing now. We're talking about the 2023 edition. In August, we close the edition. And then in September, create a proposal, which is circulated to BISG membership for comments and approval. And then once that's approved, it goes to the BISG Board of Directors for final approval. And then in December, uh, the edition is released by BISG. So around now when the, um, the new edition is being released, we're also talking about the next edition. So the 2022 edition is coming out this week, but um, we're already in discussion on the 2023 edition. Uh, what what do headings look like? So the headings are, uh, there's a, a literal, a code and a literal. The code is uh, three alpha letters and six numbers. And then the literal is the high level subject uh, backslash and the subheadings. Here are some examples of um, what, um, what the uh, codes look like. Um, the, the code is always nine characters, nine alphanumeric characters that never changes. Um, the literal, we haven't gone past four, uh, I guess three subheadings, so four levels. And in a code, the first characters represent the section. In most, most cases, it's, um, pretty intuitive. Uh, the only time it's not intuitive, I believe, is um, body, mind, and spirit, which has a code of OCC uh, because uh, a long time ago, that used to be uh, occult, occultism. And when it was changed, when the literals were changed, the codes stayed the same. So people would not have to reclassify all of their all of the books they had with an OCC heading. You, the, though the numbers look hierarchical, they can't um, be read as such. And the codes are intended for uh, use in electronic files and the literals for print and display purposes. Just an example of the subject numbers if you look at the blue ones, they are um, hierarchical. So um, at one time, those headings were all next to each other. But as time went on and 
literals got changed and uh, headings got added. There were a number of codes that you know broke up that um, that hierarchy. So that's why you can't uh, depend on any kind of hierarchy for um, for coding. In our new edition, um, the naming convention for the edition is is always the year in which the edition is created. So even though it's December, we're still coming out with the 2022 edition uh, because we created it in 2022. We closed this edition in August. It's the 28th edition and hopefully it will be released this week. Uh, in a new edition, you'll find what you'll find is literal changes inactivations, new headings, and sometimes a reactivation. A uh, reactivation is when a code was inactivated a long time ago and we're suddenly finding books coming, um, being published on that topic and decide we need to reactivate the code. When we make literal changes, we do that to either update a literal to a more common or acceptable term uh, to organize similar headings um, into trees and sometimes to expand or clarify the scope of a heading. And sometimes we'll use a literal to reduce the scope of a heading. So sometimes you'll, you will have to, when there's a literal change, sometimes you will not have to move data, but sometimes you will have to move data. Um, on the, with a scope reduction, um, you will most likely have to move data at, uh, for example, at one time we had cooking, vegetarian, and vegan. But as more, more and more books were being published on veganism, we split it into cooking, vegetarian, and cooking, vegan. So if you had books um, just about veganism on under that heading, you know, had to move them to a new heading because vegan was no longer a part of the older code. Um, so you will have to, sometimes we'll just, a literal will just, uh, we'll just add a cross reference to it or just, um, you'll see as I go on, make a, what is, appears to be a pretty minor change to it, but doesn't change the meaning. Uh, I've mentioned before, uh, trees, making things into trees. So I'll just mention about trees and branches. Uh, we have level one, which is the main topic, and that shouldn't be used alone. So that's something like fiction. And then level two would be the subheading. And then level three would be the sub subheading or a branch of the level two heading. And level, that could go as far as level four. So the first branch of a tree starts with the general. You always have a fiction general. And you'll have, say, mystery and detective general. That's always going to be the first heading in the tree will be the general. And that's even when you have the next, uh, even for the level four headings. So you have fiction, mystery, and detective the tree is cozy, the cozy tree, and then it starts with general. Um, there's, that's basically how the uh, mystery and detective, how a part of the mystery and detective tree would look. So it starts with mystery and detective. Um, you can drill down to cozy and then you can drill down to other headings within cozy. For the 2022 edition, we added uh, 109 new headings, 46 literal changes, one inactivation, two reactivations, and one new heading to our merchandising themes. This is just um, to give you an idea of what we added. So we added a heading to 27 sections. It's about half of the sections. Um, 
as I said, some of these headings were based on uh, suggestions, sometimes research that um, committee members do amongst their own titles to see where there's gaps, where they have too many general uh, titles coded as general. And we changed um, literals in 19 sections. So not as many literal changes as additions. Uh, that seems to be the, um, that does seem to be um, the way it's been going lately that we've had many, many more ads than we have had changes. So today we're gonna look at um, juvenile fiction, juvenile nonfiction, young adult fiction, young adult nonfiction, antiques and collectibles, comics and graphic novels, fiction, literary collections, literary criticism and poetry. Uh, here, I usually choose uh, the sections where we had the most changes, but um, I just wanna look at the juvenile and young adult sections um, briefly to uh, explain one of the changes that we made. So, for several of our meetings, we worked with experts from uh, BookNet Canada and a company called Chickasaw Press. And they um, had a lot of knowledge and did a lot of studies on um, indigenous, uh, I guess, creating the right heading for to describe indigenous people. And for them, it was, you know, it was very important for our literals uh, to reflect the terms which was most preferred by, you know, that specific culture. So these are all the changes that we, um, a couple editions ago, we added uh, headings with indigenous peoples of the Americas. Uh, they preferred that to read indigenous peoples in the Americas. And then for several of the headings where we had a Canada indigenous, they preferred that to say indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. So in several places where we had um, Canada, we changed it to indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. And You'll probably, right now we've made those changes in juvenile and in young adult and, we, um, and one in poetry, but you will probably see that um, going more going forward as we continue to go through the list to, um, you know, to, to accommodate their requests. In case you're unfamiliar, uh, Turtle Island, simply refers to the continent of North America and settlers renamed Turtle Island, North America. If you want, if you would like more information on the term Turtle, Turtle Island, you can refer to uh, the Canadian Encyclopedia. And I wanted to mention before, um, before I go on to talk about uh, the changes in juvenile. Um, so if someone comes to us and has, and you know, has done re research to sh show that one term is preferred over another by a specific group, um, you know, we will listen and we will make the change if, you know, if we find that that's uh, the case. So for juvenile fiction, we had five additions and four updates. One of the changes that we made, uh, I'll call out was uh, for disabilities and special needs. Um, you know, we, we found the term special needs was being phased out by, um, by the disabled community and they want to stop using that euf euphemism and prefer just the term disabled. So consistently, pretty consistently throughout the list, um, you know, where it said disabilities and special needs, we changed it to just disabilities. 
Uh, we added, we um, made some changes to um, legends, myths and, myths and fables, um, added some comics and graphic novels and um, some changes to peoples and places. In the edition that we're currently working on, which is 2023, we're going to be looking more at the legends, myths and fables and people and places trees uh, to see about making changes to them. In juvenile nonfiction, again, we have the uh, disabilities and special needs change. Um, we have uh, people in places, indigenous peoples of Turtle Island general, and we added teachings and traditions. Um, as I said, the, the, especially in juvenile fiction and juvenile nonfiction, the, if we make a change in one, we generally make that same change in the other or addition. If we make the addition in juvenile fiction, there's a good chance we'll add it to juvenile nonfiction, but not always. Young adult fiction, um, we added uh, two headings and we updated one. Um, we added indigenous uh, people and places, indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, and we added urban and street lit. And that was a heading in uh, the fiction section that we are finding a lot of young adult fiction on as well. And in young adult nonfiction, uh, we did, we added two and we updated one. And that was, uh, they pretty much mirror what we did in young adult fiction. So the one section that we updated the most was antiques and collectibles. Uh, you know, so in looking at this section, um, the last time we updated this section was in January of 2000. So it had, there, there hadn't been any real changes to it in about 20 some years. Um, some of the headings we found were, um, that were inactivated. At that time, we found we needed to add back in. We, um, so, you know, while the world of antiques and collectibles uh, may not change very much, um, I guess what people collect and, um, the way in which they buy or sell things have changed over those 20 years. So in this section, we created two trees, one for buying and selling and one for subjects and themes. And there were a number of literal changes um, here because we moved um, several existing headings into the subjects and themes tree, as well as adding new headings to that tree. In buying and selling, we added general, auctions and dealerships, estate sales and storage units, flea markets, yard sales, thrift shops, et cetera, and online sales. And in the subjects and themes tree, uh, the red are the additions, general animals, holidays, religious and trains. The blue are the literal changes. Those are headings that were moved from another place to this new subjects and themes tree. And the green are the reactivations. Uh, those are the headings that were inactivated uh, many years ago. And we thought you know, that there were enough titles to reactivate those headings and add them to the subjects and themes tree. And that was nautical and royalty. Also for 2022, we started talking about comics and graphic novels. Um, in this section, we added seven headings. We updated one. Um, this is a section that was added, um, at first added in 2003, and it only had 15 headings at the time. So, you know, now that that section has grown significantly, and we will be picking this up again for the 2023 edition. Uh, some of the, we had some experts coming in uh, to talk to us about this specific section and 
um, because of various things, we had to push them off to the 2023 edition, but you will see more in comics and graphic novels. And as I said before, uh, fiction, always many new additions in fiction. Uh, in this section, we added 10 headings and we did three updates. Uh, so some of the headings we added, diversity and multicultural, um, we created a historical 20th century tree, um, which we moved some headings into, and we created a performing arts tree. We also made numerous changes to literary collections. On this section, we did nine editions and three updates. Um, I only show two updates here because one of the updates only updated um, the cross-reference, um, not the assignable literal. So I didn't show, show it here um, because I don't know if everyone even takes the cross-references in, um, in their systems. In this, oh, in this section, um, we created a subjects and themes tree. Um, that's why all those headings are new. As well as adding um, Asian American and Pacific Islander and Hispanic and Latino. And let's not forget the prisoners and prisoners writings. In literary criticism, uh, we made four editions and three updates. And again, I only show two updates here because um, or literal changes because um, one was a cross reference. And we in this section, we already had a subjects and themes tree, but we just added some headings to it. And Poetry was another um, one that we made uh, several additions to. And this one, we added five headings and made four literal changes. Uh, this one too already had a subjects and themes tree to which we just added um, political and protest and war. We did add quite a number of headings two uh, Bibles. We added two new uh, Bible trees. And I just want to mention that because um, I wanted to talk a little about that because um, so you'll hear me mention this a lot during uh, this webinar. One, one of my favorite things to do is to, you know, go into Twitter and read what people are saying about uh, the bisex subjects. And Sometimes I find what they're saying very humorous and which is probably why I, I read them a lot. Just did they make me laugh? So one of the tweets I saw the other day was um, about the number of Bible headings versus the number of comics and graphic novel headings. And it said, and if this person is on the call, um, I'm not mentioning names. So, um, you know, I apologize in, in advance for calling you out, but uh, the person says, did you know that there are 184 different BISAC codes for Bibles and only 46 different comic and graphic novel BISAC codes? Uh, well, there's a reason for that. And um, the reason is, um, uh, so while well, we created these two trees just to move some Bibles out of uh, the other translations heading uh, so people can find them easier. But the Bible's, uh, the Bible's tree or the Bible section, I should say, is structured so that each um, heading, each Bible translation, and sorry about the background noise, um, each Bible translation has uh, 12 headings. So everyone has the same 12 uh, subheadings. And this section was structured uh, for a reason as such. Uh, it was structured to meet the needs of Christian publishers. 
at, at one time they were using their own set of codes. I think they were called the CSC codes, uh, the Christian subject codes. And we didn't really want them using their own set of codes. We preferred them to use the, um, our, the BISAC codes. So in order to um, compromise, you know, we went through with them the CSC codes and um, the BISAC codes and, you know, added codes or changed codes based on their needs. And one of the compromises was that, you know, they wanted to be able to track Bibles by translation and, you know, which kind of Bible within each translation they had sales in. And, you know, so that was the compromise that we add these 12 subheadings for each, for each translation. So it has nothing to do with um, the fact that, you know, we like Bibles better or than we do comics and graphic novels, but, you know, the, the Bible tree is just structured in a way that it comes out with more headings than um, probably most, many other sections. And Connie, if I if I could just add that, that this is a, a useful opportunity to also say that the importance of a topic is not really the the measure. It's it's a function of you know how do you need to structure the information so that the books can best be the content of the books can best be categorized. Thank you, Brian. I have um, something to that effect a, a couple of times. Um, you know, based on some other comments that. I've read, so um, you know we'll see that topic come up several times. I'm, I might have to do, do an intervention and get you off of Bisec Twitter. <laughs> uh, some of the miscellaneous new headings that we added: um, uh, we added art, uh, Celtic art. Um, I believe in art. We also added still life, which um, was odd that we didn't have at all, but. Um, business, we added diversity and inclusion, uh, cooking, farm to table. I think another one we added in cooking was picnicking and tailgating. Um, as well, we also added regional and ethnic Amish and Mennonite. Uh, this came from actually a request uh, that we thought was, it was a really well-formatted request. And, um, you know, we, we actually saw the need to add uh, crafts and hobbies, cosplay. Uh, we added games and activities, mahjong. We added history, Europe, Ukraine, as more books come out about the Ukraine. A uh, humor topic, health and aging. Law, animal law. Philosophy, environmental. Sports and recreation, college sports and the all important sports and recreation racket sports pickleball, which is an emerging sport and um, you know, has a surprising amount of books coming out about how to play. One of the questions that uh, I hear a lot is whether multiple headings should be used on a book. And the answer is yes, it should be whenever it's applicable. Uh, not just for the purpose of using multiple headings, but if you need to, you should. Because sometimes there's no single correct subject and sometimes different customers who are looking for things, they might approach your titles from different, different angles or different categories. And you wanna cover every aspect, every important aspect of your title. Um, for example, um, you know, say you have if you have a book about uh, civil rights, a civil rights movement, you might wanna add uh, something like political science, civil rights, uh, but you also might wanna add social science, African-American and black studies. Somebody who's looking for books on African-American and black studies will probably be, be, be very interested in your book on civil rights. Um, so, you know, you have to consider how people might look for your book and, and all the topics that your uh, book is, is talking about. Um, another example I had is um, sports and recreation, 
children's and youth sports. Um, another heading on that might be from family and relationships, uh, maybe parenting or maybe child abuse. Um, you know, so there might be, it might be about children's and youth sports, but it might be about a specific aspect of that. And if you're going to add um, a um, heading with multiple subheadings, you don't need to add the general from that same tree. So for example, if you're adding family and relationships, abuse, child abuse, you do not need to add general. Uh, you do not need to add family and relationships, abuse, general as well. It's not going to help people find your book better. I should say easier. Um, so the number of subject codes you should add, um, it depends on the structure of the database that's housing the record. Uh, so it's not imposed by Onyx how many you can send, um, but in some cases, uh, a data recipient might only be able to accept one or two or three. Um, so you usually want to put them in some order of importance. So in the event that um, the recipient can only um, can only accept one, uh, you want them to accept the most important one. And um, you can assign more than three, but it's not. Um, uh, there's some point they stop stop being less or they're less meaningful. So like you don't want to add, you know, like, oh, my book's kind of about sports. So I'm going to do sports general, but history of sports. So I'm going to do history general. You know, it's, people won't find your book um, when you're adding those more general topics. Uh, some of the best practices um, that you should think about when you're assigning headings is that um, the subject is based on the book's content. It's not about the merchandising plans of the publisher. You always wanna assign the most precise subject and do them in order of importance. And you always wanna choose the most specific subject. Um, and consider what we call logical guidelines. So if you're adding a fiction subject, you know, you shouldn't add a nonfiction subject with that. Um, a book is generally not both fiction and nonfiction. So you usually just use the fiction headings um, by themselves without adding something else like history or political science. Um, so, and then don't mix um, juvenile, young adult, and adult headings with each other. So, you know, you shouldn't say something shouldn't have um, a juvenile fiction heading and a young adult fiction heading, or, you know, a juvenile nonfiction heading and a young adult nonfiction heading. Um, the BISAC should always match the audience. So if you're using a juvenile or young adult heading, you should have an audience that's, um, you know, the grade level, an age or grade level, and that should um, match the BISEC you're putting on the book. And I, there is um, a chart of when to use juvenile, when to use young adult. Um, it was on the, uh, it's in the, uh, FAQs for um, on the BISG website, um, but juvenile I think goes up to grade um, eight and then a young adult is grades nine to 12. And then you shouldn't, if something is appropriate for a young adult and adult, you shouldn't be using, um, mixing the young adult and adult headings with each other either. Um, so juvenile by itself, young adult by itself, and then anything else, the others by themselves. And regarding mixing fiction and nonfiction headings, the same holds true for juvenile and young adult. Um, you shouldn't be using a JUV and a JNF heading on the same record, and you shouldn't be using a YAN and YF heading on the same record. Uh, 
subjects in foreign language study, therefore works about the language or about learning the language, they don't indicate the language of the book. So um, if the book is you know, written in Spanish, it doesn't get foreign language study Spanish, um, you know, even, especially if it's a translation of a fiction title, uh, it would get the same, the same fiction heading as its English version. Uh, when you're using health and fitness headings, um, you know, keep in mind that those are aimed at non-professionals and for scholarly works and uh, titles for professionals, they, uh, you would use the medical um, headings in the medical section. And this uh, concept is um, applies to several other uh, sections. It applies to um, nature versus science. Nature books are more um, for lay people, science more for professionals, uh, self-help more for um, you know, people who don't have psych psychology degrees or, and then psychology more for uh, professional books on um, psychology uh, textbooks, maybe that you would use in a classroom. And I mentioned a little earlier about heading suggestions and um, if you have headings that you want to see added, um, anyone can submit a uh, suggestion to the committee. You don't have to be a BISG member. You don't have to be a committee member. Um, the requests, or any requests received from the industry, um, we discuss, we consider, unless sometimes they're too vague to, uh, for us to really discuss them. We don't really know what the ask is. Um, so if you want a new request, um, you, you know, please be very clear on what it is uh, exactly that you're looking for that's not covered already. When you're submitting a suggestion, you want to keep these things in mind. Uh, you know, you have to consider whether the heading could be applied to at least 100 unique ISBNs. Um, whether that heading would be used by all publishing companies. So if it's a heading that is very, um, that applies maybe to only books your company is publishing, we probably would not consider it because um, we don't do, um, we don't add headings that only one company would, could possibly use. You wanna consider whether your suggestion is too narrow or too broad and consider the top, the 54 top level sections and determine where your suggestion fits. Um, if you decide you want to add, you think you need to add a top level section, um, I've seen before like geography uh, be thrown about. Uh, you need to support this with research and um, other publish, you know, bring other publishers in on the conversation and the committee would like to see those um, presentations in person um, or during one of our meetings, uh, rather than just uh, via email or on the form. And you want to look to see if a comparable heading or a less specific heading already exists. Um, for example, we received a heading on a juvenile nonfiction sibling grief and we reviewed this and we felt that the title could be coded with juvenile nonfiction, social topics, death, grief, bereavement, and juvenile nonfiction, family and siblings. So using those two headings is, is pretty much the same as, uh, or quite similar to sibling grief. Um, so this was a heading that we decided not, a suggestion we decided not to add. Uh, so if you want to submit a suggestion, I usually here I show the, um, the BISG website, but I know there's some updates going on to it. So I'm not going to show, I'm not going to go to the BIS web, BISG website to show the form, but I do have an example of the form. 
Um, this is just the beginning of it. Uh, so you would say whether you're doing a, a new heading or you want to change an existing heading. If you wanna change an existing heading, tell us exactly what the code is for that heading um, and what you wanna change, what you think needs to be changed about the literal. If you're doing a heading request, uh, select one of our high level headings and put your request in. And there's a spot to do, to put examples in. So you have to provide at least uh, three examples for the form to go through. Um, a couple, of, I would love to do, all, besides my Twitter, um, my tweets, I'd also like to love to uh, do a webinar one day on, on how not to submit one of these forms. And um, that too would be quite humorous. Um, but a couple things to say um, about it is, you know, I'd prefer if you didn't if you didn't flood the form by having um, you know hundreds of people put in the same suggestion, because we will base our decision on the books available, uh, not the number of requests that are made for a certain heading, um, and to not put in multiple requests for the same heading but under every single high level section. So there's no need to put a request in for something under medical and health and fitness and family and relationships, just the same subheading under you know, every single high level heading. Um, Brian mentioned before when I, when I uh, talked about the um, Bible, the, the number of Bible headings versus the number of comic and graphic novel headings. Um, you know, we're not trying to make, and as a committee, or I'm sure as an organization, you know, there, we're not trying to make any kind of political statement. Um, everything we do is based on, you know, everything we do is driven by books, by the books being published. Um, there was uh, on one of the suggestions that came in, someone wrote, uh, this topic deserves its own category. Um, you know, does it? We don't know, you know, like if he didn't give a hundred examples, then, um, you know, we have to research that. And if we can't find them, then maybe it doesn't, if it's um, not something people are publishing books about. Or maybe it's a heading that we feel is already covered by something or that already fits into something that we have. Um, for example, um, somebody added or uh, put a suggestion in about um, child loss, loss of a child uh, as a baby. It was a perinatal bereavement and we have a lot of headings on uh, death, grief, and bereavement. Um, and then, but we did ended up taking an existing heading, uh, which was miscarriage, and we changed it to miscarriage and baby loss. As most of the books, you know, a lot of books combine those two topics to talk about, um, you know, miscarriage and baby loss as uh, in the same context. Uh, so we just added that to um, to meet her needs. Um, and I also wanted to mention that, um, so BICEP doesn't reflect the audience of the book. So, you know, if you have uh, one of the subjects that it have been, has been coming up is fiction women. And um, it, it's been, implied that that heading is used for books where the audience uh, should be women. And uh, that's not what the heading is for at all. Um, you know, so we do have headings that, you know, call certain things out, call out certain um, genders or races, you know, just because there's books about that and people are looking for those books. People want to find you know, perhaps people want to find books about, you know, fiction books about Asian Americans or with Asian American characters. Um, 
And one of the misconceptions that I usually see is that because a heading is kind of describing one thing or says one thing, it means all of the other headings mean the opposite. And that is not true at all either. Um, one that I see a lot of complaints about is fiction, uh, clean and wholesome. If you're adding fi fiction, clean and wholesome, that does not mean every other book out there, every other work of fiction is not clean and wholesome. It just means your book is clean and wholesome. So you assign that heading because that's how, you know, there's some audience that's looking for books that are clean and wholesome. And they want to know that, you know, they want to know what kind of characters in a book. They want to know what kind of, as much as possible, what kind of content in a book, because they're going to limit their search to, you know, just those types of books. So, um, you know, there's no, I've seen every kind of, every kind of comment there is about, um, you know, why we don't have some headings or why we do have some headings. And um, it's not our failure to, you know, recognize a country. It's not um, our failure to recognize a class or, you know, why, why does pets only have 15 headings? Does that mean pets are the least important? Um, you know, no, it's just, you know, as I said, the books are driving uh, the subjects and we, um, we spend a lot of time trying to decide what the best term is, what the most acceptable term is. You know, the fact if we add, you know, we, we recently added the Ukraine, does that mean we have to add like, you know, 20 other uh, former Soviet countries? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Um, you know, a lot of books, the Ukraine is in the news. A lot of people are writing about it. A lot of people aren't writing about some of the smaller countries. Maybe they will in the future. Um, but, you know, so, you know, we're looking at topics, um, current topics, and if, you know, if people are publishing books about them. Um, Connie, I just wanted to, to pause, have you pause for a moment. We have a handful of questions. Do you want to take those or do you want other? Things? I think I'm finished, Brian. So, yes. Okay. Well, um, um, one, one question was is simple to answer, which is if you could just navigate back to the first best practices slide. I think somebody was taking notes. Um, but in a comparable way, somebody was asking if you would share these slides. And I think you've done that in the past as well. Okay. Hi, Helen. I see a question from Helen, who I haven't used to be a committee member and haven't seen in forever. Um, Helen's question is specifically um, to uh, do we recommend users code their titles from most specific to more general? Yes. Because if you you want to do it from most specific, just in the event that um, in the event that the person you're sending it to can only take one. So you want them to get the most specific and not the most general. And I'll, I'll ask you Adam's question in a moment, but I was wondering if for, for Jean, he'd asked if you could display the first best practices slide. So sure. I think you just need to back up a bit. Yeah. And as I said, we'll, we'll share these slides when we send out a, a link to the recording. Um, the uh, is that one, that one, um, that one. I'm not sure which one is. Uh, I think it's this one. All right, let's go with that. And Gene, if if we've done you wrong, let us know. Um, Adam was asking, um, do we track how new subcategories are used and how many titles get assigned to each subcategory or subcategory? And I think the answer is yes. We don't. Well, BISG doesn't do it, but we do it through the support of other companies that do. Right in it's impossible to do it um, based on what every company is, you know, assigning how every company is using a BISEC or what every, every book that a company has in their database. Um, you know, so from, you know, my standpoint, yes, Baker and Taylor, we do look at how many titles are assigned to each, you know, to different BISACs. In a lot of cases, that's how I make suggestions on what should be um, 
and what should be inactivated or what should be, um, you know, maybe something that uh, where we have it in general and there's tons of titles about it. So we need to add a code. Um, so people do track that, not BISG as, as an organization, because every single company using BISEX is not providing their information to BISG. And, and I think there's also uh, generally when the committee is trying to think, as you just said, about whether, you know, maybe we introduced a subcategory three years ago or five years ago, and it's not seen much uptake that does affect our thinking um, about whether to maintain it or perhaps to change a literal, et cetera. And just on that topic, we do take into account, you know, that books, even though books aren't being published on something anymore, and, you know, now they're, but they're still there and they're all out of print, we do take, you know, um, things like that into account. I mean, I can't tell you how many meetings we talked about whether or not to inactivate the code for Fortran. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just based on, yeah, nobody's really publishing books on Fortran anymore, but there's like, you know, several hundred backlists, you know, that are out of print on Fortran. So, um, you know, we do take things into consideration and we try to consider every aspect because we have different people from different kinds of companies and different kinds of, you know, positions there. Um, we try to cover every um, aspect, I guess, of, of the industry and what the industry might be thinking. Thanks. Adam also asked if there's a comprehensive guide to um, the difference, say, for example, between nature and science. And I think this is an opportunity to point out that there are in each category, the text at the top of the page oh, yes. is often an explanation of how to use that category. Yes, um, Brian's right. If you have the um, if you have the word version of the list, um, it's the usage notes. They're at the beginning of the entire list. There's usage notes for each um, high level topic. But if you're looking at the website then the usage notes for each topic should be right above um, the headings for that topic. Yeah, and not, not every category has it, but almost all of them do. And it's a really useful guide for how to use that category. And uh, the committee's given a lot of thought to uh, that explanatory text. Uh, we have time for one more question. It's, it's related to the Turtle Island codes. Um, Mary's asking, are they going to affect Native American codes like juvenile fiction, people and places, US Native American, or are they Canadian indigenous? And I think the answer is kind of split because on the one hand, it's uh, you're, anyone is free to use what was introduced this year for an indigenous people of Turtle Island, but we are maintaining the US Native American true, um, codes. Correct, yes, we are uh, maintaining um, the Native American codes. And, um, you know, to be honest, I mean, with in regard to um, Turtle Island, when it was first proposed, I had never heard of it myself and had to look it up and see, you know, like what um, what it was being used to refer to. But um, you know, the person that we had uh, from BookNet Canada came in, did a very thorough explanation of everything, and um, you know, had interviews with. Um, indigenous people and it was just you know she was very convincing that this is what you know this is what they want to be referred to as and um uh, that was you know something that it's when somebody has done all that all that uh research and you know presenting you with uh information that they've gathered you know that's you know, we kind of understood, okay, that's what they want. That's what, you know, none of us are, you know, ind indigenous. So we have to go with what the research shows. Yeah. And I think that that is a good example of a, the kind of partnership that the committee tries to create on an ongoing basis is to look to subject matter experts and people who've done the research and make the subject headings useful for people who are trying to describe the books that they're publishing. So there could be no better summary, I think, of the work you've done, not just this year, but really for the two plus decades that you've been involved in this committee. Um, and as I, as I said, so coming, we, you know, we started talking about comics and graphic novels 
but there were people who liked comics and graphic novels, but no one from a comic and graphic novel department or company. Uh, so we kind of put that discussion on hold until we could get those people into a meeting and we'll be doing so for 2023. Great, I look forward to that. I know that'll be a good discussion. Connie, thank you for making the time today for going into such detail on both what the upcoming changes are gonna be. I wanna let folks who are still on the call know that the code list is ready and published. However, we are changing our website uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's it's in queue to be launched tomorrow. And the the access to the subject code list may not be fully available until the end of the week or the beginning of next week because the propagation of changes in DNS records takes 24 to 48 hours. So if you need an absolute, if you absolutely need a copy of the code list this week, write to me. Uh, you can write to the office at info, I-N-F-O at BISG.org. And we'll figure out how to get you a copy and we'll work on billing or anything else um, in a separate transaction. All right. And if anyone has any, um, if anyone has any questions um, just about a subject or about making a suggestion or, you know, just drop me an email and, um, you know, about participating in a meeting just to see what it's like or um, send me an email and um, you know, I'll be happy to talk about it with you. Yep, there's no better resource than Connie Harbison when it comes <laughs> to subject codes. Thank you again. And thanks everybody for who's participated today. Take care. Thank you.